if you're just qualifying something by does it pass the strength you're not you're not you're not learning the rest of it Woo! today we're talking about product testing product testing is a vital step in the process of bringing products to market in the past tom was our number one product tester he would design create and ride products until they broke and then figure out how to make them better and ultimately safe for us to use. Today, we have a small team of product development led by Kevin Putsky, who, well. I am the uh, general manager of Ritchie Asia and I'm the head of new product development for Ritchie. Basically anything that happens from the point Tom comes up with the sketch of something to the point where it's in your hands is one way or another through my group here at Ritchie Asia. I sat down with Kevin to have a chat about product development and ultimately our testing process. So at its basic level, what is product testing? Testing happens in a couple different ways for us at Ritchie. One of the most basic things is testing is required for compliance with certain regulation. For example, um, ISO, ISO requires us to show that a handlebar that is intended for a road bike use passes a certain amount of ultimate strength and a pertinent certain amount of fatigue strength. So we, we have set up our testing to meet those requirements, but we always kind of like to go a step beyond that and determine that something we're, we're making is going to be above and beyond ISO requirements. So we've set up some additional tests or areas where we've combined tests to try to come up with a, a more rigorous level of testing. At the most granular level, basic testing is you have an impact testing, which is exactly what it sounds like. You take your handlebar and whack it against something more or less. And then we have a fatigue testing, which is duplicating what happens when you ride your bike, all the force you're putting through the handlebar, through the stem into your frame. Those tests are designed to replicate the lifespan of a part in the testing cycle, whether it be 100 or 200,000 cycles. At the end of that testing cycle, that part should still look like it looked new. It should still be as strong as it was new, but it's probably pretty close to the end of its life. That stated, is that all we can learn from testing? I mean, if we know that this won't break, is there something else we can gain from doing these tests? Testing gives you, gives you a couple things that are really important. One, it gives you confidence that you're making safe parts. That's baseline. But then the second part of testing is, how far can this go? You know, how far can I push this? And also then ultimately, am I doing everything in the best way? So testing gives you the safety, gives you the confidence, but it also gives you knowledge and lets you learn how can I push this bar a little bit further or the seat post further, or how can I get more flex out of this seat post while still getting the strength out of it? All that sort of stuff. It's great to create product that passes testing, but what about product that fails? Surely there's got to be something to be learned there. If you're just qualifying something by, does it pass the strength? You're not, you're not, you're not learning the rest of it. If, if anybody's testing and they're not finding limits, if you do all your testing and you never break anything, either your testing sucks or your parts are overbuilt. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. ISO. ISO is the International Standardization Organization. It's a non-government agency that creates standards for everything. Did you know that there's a standard for screwing in a light bulb? How about paving the driveway? There's even a standard for making a ham sandwich. Mayonnaise, then mustard. It's fun to poke around on their site and see what their standards for, but for the sake of Richie, ISO determines the boundaries by which tests are to be conducted. ISO requires us to put the load into the handlebar in a very specific location. So mm -hmm. ISO draws up where exactly you're supposed to attach the rams for fatigue and for impact. That's where something like ISO is important mm -hmm. because no matter whose equipment you're using, ISO is ISO. It has mm -hmm. to pass. It's very controlled what the loads are, what the cycles are, how you're setting up all that. But what we found with ISO is that ISO is a great baseline. So as products change and evolve, so does the testing. The handlebars that we rode 20 years ago when these tests were first developed, they aren't the same handlebars that we're riding today. 
One of the things we looked at is we looked at that and thought, especially on a gravel bike, that's not where your hands are. That's not where you're applying the impact. ISO basically duplicates that you're riding along with your hands on the bar at the controls, period. For our testing, we've changed the location of where we're putting the input into the handlebar. Well, you ride your bike, you're down in the drops, you're on the end of the drops, in the hoods. I mean, you're all over the place. You're out in the ends of your controls. So mm. that led us to play with, play with where the locations were and change how we're actually putting both fatigue and impact. So here's the thing. Any major company willing to put their name on the side of a product is doing, at minimum, ISO testing. It's kind of like with helmets. All helmets are rated to do the same thing. But we aren't buying a product based on what at minimum they're doing. We're based it on what they're doing above and beyond. If I grab one of our, our handlebar makers also makes Bleep. handlebars mm -hmm. and test it in our equipment, I should get very close to the same results. Now, they may not share the exact results, but if they get an ISO pass, they get an ISO pass. What a lot of people don't do is they don't say, they don't look at it and go, great, we passed the ISO standard. Let's see how much further it'll go. And that's kind of one of the things we do. We run one ISO, then we run a second ISO. And if nothing's happened, then we start thinking of what else do we need to do. And sometimes that leads you to, like we're doing with the, the new mountain bars right now. We tested them. They passed impact. They passed ISO. They passed impact. They passed ISO. And we're like, okay, well, this is obviously heavier than it needs to be. So we stripped them down a little bit, got a little weight out of them. And now we're doing the same thing again, basically to see if we overbuilt them. I mean, because that's also part of it. I can build a part that will always pass testing 100% of the time, but it might not ride great. I mean, it might be too oh. stiff. It might be too, et cetera, et cetera. So testing allows you to do a lot of that sort of qualification. And that's, that's for this ultimate strength testing. There's also things like when we test for yield, easiest way to explain yield is pressing on something and seeing when it moves. How hard do I have to press this before I move? And yield tells you a lot about how something will perform when you're riding it. Great example. You rode one of the early, I think it was one of the early Montebello forks, mm -hmm. um, and you commented that it felt flexy. And going back through it, we were able to take that and take it, compare it to other forks and figure out not just, yes, it passed fatigue, yes, it passed impact, all those things were good but take it and in the yield test, which literally you're fixing the whole thing and just pressing on it both directions and seeing how far it deflects. We were able to get through it and figure out where we wanted to add a little bit more stiffness to that. That sort of thing you learn in testing. What are, what's unique to Richie? Like what would be unique testing that Richie does? Okay. I give you one of the most basic things we do that's unique is while you're required to show an ultimate yield, so an impact test on a handlebar, you're then also required to show a fatigue test on a handlebar you aren't required to do that test on the same handlebar. Meaning I can take two samples to the lab, have one pass fatigue, throw it to the side, it's done. And then take another one, have it pass impact, take that, throw that to the side and it's done. So we do that testing because we need that to show, yes, this meets the ISO standard. But we also do where I will take that same handlebar, I'll run it through impact, then I'll run it through a fatigue cycle, then I'll run it through an impact cycle, then I'll run it through a fatigue, fatigue cycle. It's the same singular handlebar. So in theory, we're pushing something far beyond the just basic ISO limits. In some extreme cases, we'll even do something where we're adding a corrosion test. So run it through impact, run it through fatigue, run it through the corrosion test. See if, are we getting any micro fracture or something that we're not seeing that's gonna show up with, um, with corrosion? Just that's, that's just some of the things we do that are a little different. While most companies have their own ISO testing equipment or relative easy access to ISO testing equipment, we've actually gone a little bit further in developing our own testing equipment to better mimic real world stress on products. I started off with designing my own testing equipment years ago and having it custom made and put in place with computerized measuring and analoging the outputs. And the first name I gave the, the first one, which was about 20 years ago, was called Moab. I mean, of course, Moab is the ultimate location in, in terms of the bike industry. And I always basically had the most fun in Moab and saw not only parts break, but people break, including myself. 
Tom looked at testing equipment that was out there and kind of did the, what does this do that I don't want to do? What do, what do I want this to be able to do? So working with a supplier here, he was able to come up with the design of the testing machine and make it specific to what we want it to do. We actually have Moab 1, which is the original machine, which has been in service for quite a while, and Moab 2, which was added a few years later to give us more capacity, but also to update a few things. Moab is a big fatigue tester. It's a computer-controlled um, hydraulic ram tester. And what a hydraulic ram tester allows us to do is it allows us to give exactly the same force over and over and over and over, you know, so I can set it and I can say, I want it to push exactly this hard for 100,000 cycles. And it just simply doesn't. And there's no variation. Moab then is being controlled by a computer basically for both determining what the loads are and recording what the effect on the part is. For example, you may have a fatigue cycle that is slowly breaking down a part. So the part looks fine. The fatigue cycle is going. It's not going outside the limits of what you set. Like, We'll set it so that if suddenly the handlebar is only supposed to be moving this far and suddenly it's moving this far, it will trigger the machine and say, hey, something's going on. It'll stop the test. We may have something that is not going outside the limits, but it's starting to change. And Moab will record that. So even if it's a very slight degradation, we'll be able to see that change go through. The One of the unique things about Moab compared to other test equipment I've worked with is that it's flexible enough that I can do forks with it, handlebars, stems, any number of other things I want to do, vibration testing, fatigue testing, things like that. Um, I can basically do any part up to frames. And the only reason we can't do frames on Moab is just size. Holy cow, that was a lot. But rest assured, by the time a product goes from a napkin sketch to the shelf of your local bike shop or even available online, it's already proven to withstand more abuse than you're likely to ever give it in the entirety of its lifetime. Want to learn more? Visit RichieLogic.com.